Chapter 12 Religious Descent and the New England Colonies The Pilgrims had solved some of their problems, but the Puritans had not. In England, the Puritans were still struggling to worship the way they wanted to. They wanted to change and purify the Church of England. When the Puritans heard about the Pilgrims' colony at Plymouth, they decided that they should try to do a similar thing. They came up with a plan to do just that. In 1628, a number of Puritans, led by a man named John Winthrop, decided that they would establish a colony in New England to the north of Plymouth. The Puritans realized that they would have to be very organized. They had heard about the hardships faced by those who had already gone to this new world. They knew that many had died due to lack of food and shelter. The Puritans were determined to avoid these mistakes. It was decided that a small group of Puritans would go ahead of the others and begin to build a colony. Then in 1629, a group of English Puritans and merchants formed the Massachusetts Bay Company. The aim of the company was to make money for the Puritan colony by trading furs as well as by fishing and shipbuilding. There would be some farming too, but the settlers knew that the rocky New England soil would never support a large farming economy. The company itself would be run according to Puritan principles or rules. It was also decided that this Puritan colony would be different from other English colonies. In order to live in this colony, people would have to live according to the Bible and strict Christian principles. John Winthrop believed that their colony should be an example to others in terms of how people should live. He once said, For we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are on us. Finally, in 1630, John Winthrop set sail for New England with three ships and about 700 colonists. They brought a good amount of food with them, as well as cows, horses, and tools. They were more prepared than any of the other English settlers so far. When they arrived, there were already some small buildings in place from the settlement of the first party they had sent. This settlement was called Salem. Other settlements were established in Charlestown, Cambridge, and Boston. This Puritan colony was named the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and John Winthrop would become its governor. As planned, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was different from the colonies developing in the South. The strict laws that had been drawn up in England were put in place in the colony, and people had to follow them. For example, everyone had to go to church. Those involved in the government of the colony were senior church members, and only male church members could elect their leaders. As you have heard, whereas the pilgrims were happy to separate from the Church of England, the Puritans wanted to remain a part of it and were determined to change it. They hoped that by their strict example of pure living, the Church of England would become stricter too and do away with many rules it still had from its Roman Catholic influence. The Massachusetts Bay Colony was very successful and grew quite rapidly. Each Puritan town was carefully planned, with each family being given enough land on which to build a home and farm. The most important building in the town was the Meeting House. This was where religious services and town meetings were held. The Puritans also believed in the power of education. They wanted their children to be able to read so they could read the Bible. In 1631, Roger Williams, a minister from London, arrived in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in Boston. Almost from the beginning, Williams did not agree with some of the leaders. He believed that the leaders of the colony had too much control over people's lives. He especially disliked the close connection between the church and the government. Williams felt that what was happening was too much like the English system they had tried to escape. The leaders of the Massachusetts Bay Colony felt threatened by his views. As more and more people came to the colony, Williams saw more and more land being taken from the Native Americans. He strongly believed that the Native Americans should be paid for this land. Before long, 
The leaders of the Massachusetts Bay Colony considered him to be a troublemaker. Roger Williams was labeled a religious dissenter and was forced to leave the colony. There were some who wanted to send him back to England. Before they could send him back, however, in 1636, Roger Williams left the colony in the middle of the night in the dead of winter. A few of his supporters left with him. It was bitterly cold, and he and his followers had nowhere to go. With the help of some Native Americans, they survived in the woods for three months. Eventually, Williams made his way south to what would become Providence, Rhode Island. There he purchased land from the Narragansett, a local Native American tribe. This area became the colony of Rhode Island. Gradually, others who also found it difficult to follow the strict Puritan way of life followed Williams. Rhode Island became a haven for people who wanted to be free to practice their faith or religious beliefs in their own way. Rhode Island became the first English colony to allow people complete religious freedom and welcome not only Puritans, but Quakers, Roman Catholics, Jewish people, and others too. Another Puritan who followed Roger Williams was a woman named Anne Hutchinson. She and her husband and children had arrived in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1634. As you have heard, women were not part of the decision-making process in the church or in society in general. Women certainly weren't allowed to preach or deliver a religious speech or message in church. Because of these restrictions, Anne Hutchinson organized weekly meetings in her home for women who wanted to discuss these sermons or religious speeches. In these meetings, women also were free to discuss their religious views. These meetings became so popular that men and even some of the church leaders began to attend. Hutchinson openly expressed her view that a person's individual faith was more important than being a member of an organized church. She also said that a person's personal relationship with God was the only thing that really mattered. This was considered by many to be a very dangerous view because the Puritan church had strict rules that were required to be followed. On top of this, Anne Hutchinson was a woman. So just like Roger Williams, Hutchinson was put on trial for being a dissenter. During the trial, Hutchinson was ordered to recant, or take back, her beliefs and say she changed her mind. But she refused. Like Roger Williams, she too was banished. In 1638, Anne Hutchinson joined Roger Williams in Rhode Island. After her husband died, she moved to New York with her younger children to start a new life. At the time, New York was called New Netherlands and was a Dutch colony. The governor there did not have a good reputation with the Native Americans and had caused many disputes between the Native people and the colonists. He had also created tension among various groups of Native Americans. In 1636, a Puritan minister by the name of Thomas Hooker also left the Massachusetts Bay Colony with a group of supporters. They made their way to an area that is now Connecticut and founded the town of Hartford near a wide river now known as the Connecticut River. Soon, two more settlements, Windsor and Wethersfield, were established in the colony of Connecticut. One of the things that Thomas Hooker believed was that all men should be allowed to vote not just those who were members of a church or those who were wealthy. In 1639, Thomas Hooker implemented a system of government in Connecticut called the Fundamental Order of Connecticut. It was a form of democracy that later helped to inspire the creation of the U.S. Constitution. We've just talked about the creation of three of the four New England colonies. The last New England colony is New Hampshire, you might be surprised to hear that King James I helped to establish New Hampshire, too. Remember how he gave an area of land to his friends? Well, he had given land in this part of North America to two more of his friends, John Mason and Fernando Gorgias. Later, the two men divided the land in half, 
and Mason got the southern part that became the New Hampshire colony in 1679. Many unhappy Puritan settlers also found their way to this colony. Gorges received the northern half that would later become the state of Maine. As you can see, back in the 17th century, many English people were willing to risk their lives to sail to a faraway land in the hope of a better life. Do you think you would have been willing to do the same? <laughs>